the economies of the world depend on the simple concept of supply and demand. In a healthy market, competition thrives when supply meets demand. But what happens when a few powerful players control access to the market itself? This is the situation in the mobile app industry where Google and Apple are currently acting as gatekeepers through their app stores. This is the story of the battle brewing between Google, Apple and a new challenger, phone pays in this app store. In today's episode, we are going to dig deep into four things. Number one, commission structure of app stores. Number two, delisting of Indian apps from the Play Store. Number three, should the government interfere? And number four, should India have its own app store? First off, let's understand the commission model of these app stores. Imagine that you are a mobile app developer. You make your dream app and you want to make it public. Now you only have two major platforms to release your app to the public, Google's Play Store and Apple's App Store. So you might want to consider paying a nominal one-time fee of $25 for Google Play or an annual fee of $99 for Apple's App Store. This arrangement seems very reasonable to me. They provide distribution and in return, you pay for the listing. But here is the catch. What if you wanted to monetize your app? There are three ways to go about it. One, you can make your app paid. Two, you can introduce in-app purchase on your app. Three, you can make your app subscription based. Well, you remember the nominal fee they charge when you list your app on their app stores. That's because they also make money when you make money. Let's assume you made a game like PUBG, then all the money that you make by selling skins battle passes, etc., you will have to pay a flat 30% commission to Google and Apple. But things get a lot more complicated when it comes to subscription revenue. Let's say you made an OTT or music streaming platform and you made it really big. Maybe you made $2 million in your very first year on Android and iOS each. In that case, you have to pay 150K plus 300K equals to 450K to Google Play alone. And in case of Apple's App Store, you will have to pay 600k in the first year versus 300k in the second year and onwards. That means if you are making any money through subscriptions, you will have to pay 15% of your revenue to Google for the first $1 million of revenue. After that, you will have to pay a share of 30%. In the case of Apple App Store, you will have to pay 30% for the first year and 15% from second year onwards. By the way, some app categories are exempt from this commission model. Payments for food, physical products and tangible services bypass the 30% commission model. That means Google and Apple don't get a cut of consumers money for Zomato orders, Amazon products and Uber rides. Accounting for the average 20 to 30% CAC of the revenue that a startup usually needs to spend along with 15 to 30% of commission you are directly paying up to 50% of your total revenues to Google and Apple app stores before counting in your development cost and other expenses. That leaves the profit margins razor thin for apps to grow during their initial period. Now let's zoom into the fight between Google and Indian apps. On March 1st, Google delisted a lot of popular apps like Sadi.com, Cuckoo FM and 99 Acres from the Play Store for not complying with their payment policy. Google versus Indian app developers. It all started last Friday. Around 200 Indian apps were removed from Google's Play Store. This led to a series of tweets by major tech personalities calling Google the East India company for its monopolistic behavior. According to them, the pricing model for app revenue is harsh and unfair. While on 5th March, an interim truce has been called with the introduction of full billing and extended payment terms of 120 days. It's evident the matter is far from settled. With the issue now in the hands of the Supreme Court, Google Play Store faces the prospect of significant repercussions, including potential amendments to the commission structure. It's not just Google and Indian apps that are battling it out. Today, the commission has fined Apple uh, 1.84 billion uh, euros for abusing its dominant position on the market for the distribution of music streaming apps. Under all this chaos, a question arises. Isn't India a big enough market to have its own app store? Should the government interfere? And most importantly, if there is one, what will it take for it to succeed? Let's talk about how big is the Indian app market. As a matter of fact, Indians downloaded 25.96 billion apps on their mobile devices across Android and iOS. In 2023, according to analytics platform data.ai, 
Collective revenues from app stores of different publishers stood at $415 million in India. Here are some numbers to add more perspective. India has over 29,000 developers who have published 1,50,000 apps on the Play Store. This accounts for less than 3% of all developers on the store. Globally, the in-app economy is driven by gaming, dating, entertainment, education, and utility. According to the last available data, India roughly generated 600 million of in-app revenues in 2021, but Indian apps accounted for just 10% of this number. Let me rephrase this. 60 million of in-app revenues came from apps published by Indian developers. Should the government of India step in to create an app store using digital public infrastructure, something similar to UPI and ONDC? Well, our government did in fact launch M Seva in 2013 with a vision to create an app store owned by the government. But the adoption of it seems very low. According to an article by Money Control, M Seva has about 9 crore downloads. The apps currently on M Seva are mostly banking and government apps and it doesn't seem like developers care a lot about it. And here are three reasons why I feel it's not a good idea for the government to have full control of an app store in India. Number one, historically, the policies of our government aren't very progressive. Number two, the UX of our government apps leaves a lot to be desired. Take any government made app and it's an absolute pain to use. Number three, speed of execution, app updates and releases need to be quick and it might be hard for the government to work at the pace at which tech companies work. I strongly feel a private player like Paytm or PhonePay is much better positioned to create an app store for India, de-risking Indian apps from the monopolies of Google and Apple. Although the government should not take responsibility for creating the app store, it should keep an eye on the private app stores to ensure that the issues encountered with Google and Apple do not repeat again. You might be aware that PhonePay recently launched Indus app to make an India-centric app store and well, they were able to cross 500,000 installs within first two weeks of launch. Here is how Indus app store currently stands out. They have a mobile-based login instead of email-based login. They charge zero commissions for in-app payments. There is no listing fee for the first year and they also support 12 Indian languages besides English. Additionally, they offer India-based support team and dedicated account managers. But now, the final and the most important question. How PhonePay can drive scale and adoption for Indus App Store? Here is a breakdown of how PhonePay can propel Indus App Store to the wider use and acceptance. Number 1. Pre-installation partnerships. Partner with leading smartphone brands like Xiaomi, Vivo, Samsung and Oppo, controlling over 50% of the Indian market share to pre-install Indus App Store on these new devices. This guarantees a significant user base right from the start. Point 2. Leveraging PhonePay's existing user base. PhonePay's existing app on the Play Store boasts over 50 crore downloads. They can utilize this established user base by promoting and pushing Indus App Store within the PhonePay app itself. Point 3. Exclusive deals for Indus users. Partner with popular app developers to offer discounted pricing for users who download the app through Indus App Store. Since Indus charges lower commissions, developers can easily pass on their savings as incentives to attract new users. Point 4. Incentives for app developers. This would incentivize developers via grants, events and awards to build more apps for the Indus App Store. With that, we come to the end of episode 2 of Scale by iTry. Comment down your thoughts on the whole saga and have you downloaded the Indus App Store already? Thank you for watching. See you next time. This is Namneet signing off.